Man, what the fuck are you doing? You left the front door wide open. What's wrong, Joe? Man, come on, get in the car. We'll talk on the way home. Tokyo's long enough. Gibbons. He didn't make it. Guys must have been up against some heavy hitters. You get hit? No. You should have. Boss gonna think you ran. Finish a job? Yes. That's good on you. Wish you didn't bring it back so messy. You gotta help me dump Gibbons. Every time I hear he didn't make it, I'm left with a trunk full of blood samples. It's unprofessional. You tell me you left the fucking body?
Meet Scott and Joe. You're gonna have to catch a ride back in town with me. Got some stuff in the trunk. You don't need them. You're not drinking? It's cold. Still good. Oh, come on, Joe. It's just a little precaution. You gotta respect that. I've been up for 20 hours. It seemed a little bit of the ultra violence hit the boob tube last night. Ruffled some feathers. <laughs> yep, saw it on the news. Three bodies. It should have been one. Or four. They had a cute little college girl. Wouldn't mind giving her some beer back consolation. Her mom wasn't half bad either. I think she's a little bit too stiff for me now. And you know it's extremely against protocol to leave a traceable compadre on the front steps of the hit. So last night after the news, the boss is having a fit. I mean, he's going ballistic. It's what the F this and what the F that. And right when I'm about to go home, he goes, Where are you going? Which means I became the unlucky bastard charged with tracing your shenanigans around all night. Actually, I was surprised. The boss hasn't taken off my leash in a long time. Between you and me, I don't think he was thinking straight. <laughs> and normally I don't mind. But last night was my one night a month that my better half sheds the bitch skin. Get this, she goes to drag bingo. Stumbles home hammered and expects to get nailed. <laughs> Ah, don't mind me, Joe. Now, I couldn't get in the coats home last night because the cops and reporters were swarming the place. Heard it was pretty brutal in there. I figured whatever went down went down pretty hard. And I didn't get it until I drove out to Chuck's and realized that the duty had slammed the fan. Joe King has gone rogue. And that made me happy. Because if you're going to be running around half-cocked, putting bullets in our teammates, then I'm pretty sure I can get a pat on the head for putting you under. Honestly, Joe, I miss it. I mean, I really miss it. I mean, I'm not as feverish about it as I was when I was much younger, but if I could just get that last kick of mule adrenaline, Feel it? When you killed them? Did it feel good? I like you, Joe. Always have. You know, you never spoke much. You never hung around the chit chat. You weren't as see through as the other assholes in Cubby's camp. But I could never quite figure you out. You didn't show fear to anyone, not even the boss, and I respect that. You're not even showing fear right now. And it's probably because you know. You know I'm gonna kill you as sure as the sun is in the sky. Turn this into something.
The neighboring state has been rocked by a brutal triple murder after a mail carrier reported the dead body of an unknown man in front of the home of city councilman Aaron Coates. Authorities searched the home after responding to the call and finding the councilman's front door ajar. Inside the home, the slain bodies of councilman Coates and his wife, Miranda Coates. This horrible news comes just days after the city councilman lost his re-election bid to community leader Robert Gold, crushing the legal and construction plans to bring a legal gambling district into the area. No details yet on definitive causes of death. Fearing an assassination attempt, authorities have taken into protection the Coates' only daughter, Patricia. She has been taken to an undisclosed location until her safety is cleared. As of now, there's been no additional information from the authorities. We believe that the press will be formally addressed within the hour. you were the lucky one, Joe. Of all the times you brought Cubby's gym wits in here, I never had you on my table. You'll live. something to cover that up. been hearing about a lot of questionable things. Gibbons wasn't the brightest. That's Cubby's problem. 
Chuck, on the other hand, is a contract player like me. And I'm at the least a bit concerned about you showing up on my doorstep. Faith? Are you here to kill me? No. You want to kill me now? No, this has nothing to do with you. Who does it have something to do with? Me? Your cubby. Fair enough. You two settle whatever it is. I ain't too keen on getting caught up in other people's bullshit. I'll get you something to cover that up. I'll get you a shirt too. Same as Sanctuary, Joe. You taking any parting gifts with you? Just need bullets.
go! What are you doing out here? <sighs> we need to talk. <sighs> How long you been out here? Billy Moss. Billy Moss? What for? That's up to settle. You don't come around here no more. Look, let's walk and talk. What happened with you and Gibby? Stay out of it, Will. Cubby's pissed. Did you know he sent Barry to find you? He never sends Barry. Folks are talking, saying there's a price on you. Look, whatever it is, I want in. Is someone hiring inside muscle? It's not about the money, Rook. Well, it is for them. You blink out after burning the councilman. Not to mention leaving Gibby's dead ass in the fucking front yard. They're talking a hundred grand. You doing this for nothing? Not for nothing. hundred grand. That's a lot of money to me, Joe. You ain't got a better hand. Gonna have to play mine. Stay out of it, Rook. Better not miss. Fuck you, Joe. Excuse me, gentlemen. As the proprietors of this establishment, that you've chosen as the backdrop for your little dramatic moment, we deem it necessary to intervene before it escalates any further. You see, we don't tolerate bloodshed here unless we implement it. Man, fuck you. John. Sit down. Mr. Joe Kane, you've become a very important man in a very short matter of time. That wasn't my intention. No, not an intention. Consequence. When hearing the graveness of your actions, I was intrigued. I needed to decide if I want to have a role in this. It has nothing to do with you. Oh, but it does. Just as much, if not more, than it has to do with young Rook over there. A lot can happen in 48 hours. Empire can fall. Empire can rise. All wars, no matter the conflict, business opportunities. Good investor does his research. I want to know the cause of the henchmen's war. This is yours. She is the reason. Joseph Anthony King is a young man who 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 is a young man a young man who is a young I didn't kill him. Well, nevertheless, Miranda may as well have taken you for dead. I am. No. You were resurrected. 
So what did Mr. Coates do wrong? He formed an alliance with your boss. And my father always told me to have patience. Told me to wait for the right moment of an adversary's weakness. To assert power. Now I see this as an opportunity to gain control over any market affected by Cubby's absence. Do you have any aspiration to take his place? When I'm done, I'm gone. <laughs> Delighted to hear such good news. How many men do you need? None. Are you sure, Mr. King? I'm sure. He's very efficient. Jewish. What the fuck did you do that for? Brooke was greedy. Formed to live and tell of her conversation. Bad for business. We offer his demise as a show of loyalty to your cause. I'll rest assured, Mr. King. If you do not finish what you've started. The neighboring state has been rocked by a brutal triple murder after a mail carrier reported the dead body of an unknown man in front of the home of City Councilman Aaron Coates. Authorities searched the home after responding to the call and finding the councilman's front door ajar. Inside the home were the slain bodies of Councilman Coates and his wife, Miranda Coates. This horrible news comes just days after the city councilman lost his re-election bid to community leader Robert Gold, crushing the construction and development plans for a legal gambling district in the area. No details yet on definitive causes of death. Fearing an assassination attempt, authorities have taken into protection the Coates' only daughter, Patricia. She has been taken to an undisclosed location until her safety is cleared. Have the authorities made any formal report? How long have you been up? As of now, there has About been an hour. Have you taken your pills? Thought not. I forgot again. Yeah, forgetting is something you can afford to do, Cubby. Any news? There's no word from Joe or Barry. I don't agree with you sending Barry. Bill Moss would attack Joe without provocation. And Eddie isn't exactly built for this heavy shit. Yeah, and Barry is psychotic enough to start a one-man serial rapist spree. It was hasty, huh? It was stupid. All of this could have been avoided. Sandra, please, don't start. No, Coates was spineless from the beginning. He never would have come through. 
Joe King does, always has. Obviously, something's gone wrong. As long as it doesn't lead back to us, it can stay that way. Billy and Eddie are on their way here now. Why here? Cubby, this is our home, not a fucking clubhouse. That's probably Billy now. We'll meet in the cigar room. Send Eddie down when he gets here. Billy's an asshole. True. But he's one of those illustrious assholes we inherited from your daddy. King's nowhere to be found. Bastards turned. Probably working for Keenan. Keenan would detest the disloyalty. I hear Keenan's moved on. His son is now heading things up. When did this happen? Uh, about a month ago. <laughs> Fuck Keenan. Billy, watch your mouth, huh? The son. What's he like? Hungry? I uh, stirred up a little rumor about prize money for Joe, so if he shows up anywhere close to home, we'll know. Should I grab a couple of guys to look after? Hey, for Joe, you know, I can take care of it. Take care of it. That won't be necessary, Eddie. Joe may be as dead as Gibbons or Chuck. What I need you to do is to find out for sure. Also, Barry, he's been out there too long. I don't want a repeat of what happened last time. Yes, sir, Mr. Webb. He's Joe King. He's been under my thumb for nearly two decades. Never a problem or a peep out of this one. With all due respect, Mr. Wagner, if Joe did whack Gibbons and Chuck, then we gotta end him. If he didn't, we had them anyway. Billy, you've been itching for Joe for too long. Well, I got my reasons. You may have your reasons, but you do not have my blessings. You wouldn't take a man's life without my blessing, would you? No, sir. He never crossed me. Things change. Get your feet off my fucking table. Joking is nothing. Hmm? We will deal with him if he hasn't already been dealt with. What concerns me is Keenan's absence and how this son of his is planning to fill his shoes. It's more of the same, boss. If somebody new steps in, they make some noise, they gotta prove that they've earned it. It's nothing new. That's what troubles me, Billy. It's the same thing. Just keeps coming back. Grinds you down. That's what gets you in the end. Barry, that babbling psychopath, he hasn't checked in. Fine, Barry. I don't want another problem. Billy, what's with the hat? 
Why are you dressed like a gangster? No, no, I'm here to talk business. What's up? Joe's turn. Joe who? Joe King. How do you know? I just know. So what? I need ears and info. Isn't that Eddie's job? I need my own ears and info. Your vendetta, huh? Color what you want. I can't help you. You can and you will. I have nothing to do with Joe King. Or what happened to your brother? I'm not asking for favors here. I'm asking for services rendered. When did Cubby remove your leash? This doesn't concern you. You want to wreck my peaceful existence for a personal beef? My brother's dead because of that bastard. I've got a window here, and I've got limited time to make do. Joe didn't pull the trigger. Prove his guilt. You can't. Joe King's been living under my thumb for over the last 20 years with Cubby's protection. Because of this coat skid, I finally have a chance, and I gotta do it before the smoke clears. Now you put a tracking signal in all the cars that you sell so that you can steal them back and resell them to the next idiot that takes that shitty smile of yours as some kind of charm. One of those idiots is Barry Bright. Now exactly how would you like me to fuck your fine establishment up while you wait to give me the whereabouts of Barry's tween poon mobile? Give me a minute. Harry's car went out flying near face last night. No idea who was driving. Why offline? GPS disruptors within a 20 mile radius. The place isn't exactly open for popular business. Anything else? Nope. You call me if something comes up. Nothing will come up. I've done all I'm going to do. I can be there in a couple. If I see you there, I'll kill you. Just do what the fuck I say. Thank you, Sandra. When are we expecting guys to get here? We're not expecting any guys. What, no security? Someone starting a war and you don't think to protect your home? This is different. Different how? 
I've just realized that Joe King isn't a man out for money or power, and a man without a vice is dangerous. So this is Joe King? Yeah, I believe it is. What does he want? Revenge. For what? Letting him live. That makes no sense. You know, my father's day, this In would not be an issue. No, day. Joe King is the fucking help. He grows the balls to kill our men, and you sit there on your fat ass spouting nonsense about why? He would be dead, along with anyone who thought to be This is with not him. your oh, father's it clearly, day! It clearly isn't. You consort with thugs in your home. They're not your friends. You never grow attachments to anyone you might have to sacrifice someday. Sacrifice? Sandra, I will not sacrifice anyone anymore, huh? No matter what choices I've made in my life, I'm still human. No, you're not. You're a crime boss. I am just an old man. You are fucking weak. Weak? No, not weak. I'm old, huh? Old! And I'm tired of all this bullshit! What tough shit, Cubby! This is your life! Our life! No matter how old or tired you are, you lay in this bed until the morning you don't wake up. I'm sick of it. Barking orders. Ending lives for nothing. You know, I've become the, the type of man I was never meant to be, oh, huh? To prove baby. myself to some evil bastard long dead just to make you happy! Oh, to make me happy? That's your reason? You mean it had nothing to do with the money or the power or the tramps you fucked while you could still get it up? This is not the time. Oh, you weren't forced into this world, Cubby. You welcomed it with open arms. I mean, even now you sit there spouting nonsense and barking your orders, pretending to be half the man my father was while some crony gets the itch to wage war on our home. Joe King may be coming for me. Or he may be as dead as all the others. Whatever the case, I will not show weakness by hiding my ass behind a bunch of gun-toting morons. Not for Joe King, not for your father, and certainly not for you! And I swear, if you ever talk to me like that again, I'll kill you where you stand with my bare fucking hands smashing through your throat. You understand that. Do it. Get the door. Get the fucking door! It's Eddie. They found Barry. Yeah? There's no need for the cat and mouse, Billy. We're looking for each other. You should have ran, Joe. I wanted to track you down, find you hiding in some shithole. I wanted to find you and kill you. 
Sorry, Billy, I'm not one for hiding. Even still in plain sight, you'd be too fucking dumb to figure out my whereabouts. You and I have something to settle. You feeling nostalgic? You remember where we first met? for my brother. No need to worry about me. I got what I wanted from Miranda a long ways back. Here, take a whiff. Should be a little bit left. We'll talk about it in hell. I don't think that Joe King is working with Keenan's son on this. No, Eddie, this is something different. This is more than just petty turf wars. Gibbons, Chuck, Barry are all dead. Joe King's missing and there's a new boss in town? It reads like a, like a power move. Keenan's son is coincidental. Why Gibbons and Chuck were slain is a mystery to me. But who killed them isn't. I don't understand. Joe King and I met at a strange time in both our lives. We both had decisions to make, which in hindsight would lead us right back to where we started at. So, all this is Joe? Eddie, this world we inhabit is not fit for men with souls. It is no place for lovers or men who regret. When I was younger, eager to learn and please, Lenny Mosley put a gun in my hand for the first time. His daughter, she loved me deeply. And the princess would get whatever her heart desired. In order for me to be accepted, I had to be of this world. If I chose different, I would break his daughter's heart and daddy couldn't bear the thought of his little princess's heart breaking. So one day, come to visit him and he, he asked me to tag along with him to have a chat. We arrive at uh, one of these small hardware stores, huh? one of those moms and pops that aren't around anymore. The store's closed. Then he has the keys. We walked in. We walk down this middle makeshift aisle and we come to the cellar door at the back. Then he knocks. And the door is opened by this huge guy I had never seen before. Trust me, Eddie. I've never been so scared in my fucking life. 
we started down. First time in my life I smelled blood, strong blood, full of piss and bowel. Every fucking step down into that darkness thumped through my body and my heart weakened. You see, I knew at the bottom of those stairs my life would end for fooling with a mobster's daughter. did end. The storekeeper was there with his wife. They're on their knees moaning, pleading, begging. And then he puts a gun in my hand and whispers my destiny in my ear. Afraid for my life. I took the store owners. But I wouldn't shoot the woman. I told him he'd have to shoot me first. Then he loved it. The big guy, he was just laughing when he shot the woman. Taking her life was just so mechanical. Didn't even look at her. He just watched me, laughing at my gumption with Eddie pointed the gun in her direction and pulled the trigger. Eddie, there's some things in there. Fuck. He's calling me at this time of the night. Maybe Billy got him. Gloves are off, Eddie. Fuck. If he's on his way here, he ain't got nothing to lose. You come across his path. You shoot first, huh? Don't you talk to him. Don't you play with him. Don't even think of swinging your dick. You just shoot him. I... Boss, I... Eddie, get the fuck out of here. doesn't concern you. Just checking. He's out back waiting for you. Walk around. I don't want you fucking up my carpet. Do you know how I know God exists? Beer. Please. No, thank you. You know what this reminds me of? Home. Before I came to the States. Friday night with the lads down the pub. Then the nightclub and the Indian for a vindaloo. In every stop, a pint of beer.
You didn't have to shoot her, you know? You knew she was there when you sent me. No, I didn't. The wife was not supposed to be at home. Blame Gibbons for the bad surveillance. I did. All of this is about her. You get up to your eyeballs in debt with me, you couldn't pay, and the inevitable happened. I am not the bad guy in all of this. You didn't pay, so what was I supposed to do? Let you go because you were in love? You broke the back of one of my guys. I'm supposed to let that go? He was confined to a life in a wheelchair, for God's sake. He killed himself. No, he didn't. Regardless, I gave you a second chance. I spared her life to wash your debt. Why didn't you go when you had the chance? We both had choices to make, Joe. I made mine. You made yours. I'm sorry for your loss. But you must realize that you pulled that trigger two decades ago. I made a hasty decision about Coates. I have no disillusions. I think this may cause the end of all our lives. Miranda deserved better.